Thank you for joining us again. Thank the Lord for His great mercy and His tender Lord, tender mercy towards us and His love towards us. And we thank Him for saving our soul and giving us the free gift of eternal life. You know, I heard something where there's a lot of people didn't know what Easter was and what Easter was all about and Good Friday and things like that. They had no idea. You know, that just goes to show me that a lot of Christians ain't getting out there in the highways and byways and compel them to come in and tell them about Jesus. The world is in bad shape. It seems like it's getting wor worse and worse and worse. You know what I mean? They're trying to shut the Christians up and shut the Christians down right there. But we just got to continue to be faithful to the Lord and seek God's face and preach His Word or testify when He wants us to. We got to stand our ground Stand up for the truth right there. Just plain and simple as that. Don't fade away like a leaf. You know what I mean? Don't fade away. Don't get wrapped up in your job. Just keep seeking God. Keep studying His Word. Keep loving the Lord right there. Keep following the Lord right there. The Lord wants you to have a personal relationship with Him. I guarantee you, if you're saved and born again, first of all, Here's how you know you're saved. When you cried out with a contrite spirit and a broken heart, when you repent of your sins, that means you turn from yourself and turn to God in your heart because you believe Jesus, because you believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ right there. It's plain and simple as that. When we turn in our heart to the Lord with all our heart, Jesus come in our heart and he saved our soul. He made us brand new on the inside. We ain't never been the same since Jesus got alive in our heart. So here's how you can tell easily if you're saved. Some people are troubled right here trying to figure out, am I saved? Am I saved? I don't know. Let me tell you, if you're truly saved, you'll have peace in your heart that you're saved. It's just plain and simple as that because when you're saved, the Holy Spirit comes into your heart and he lives there on the inside of every believer's heart. The Bible says he'll never leave you nor forsake you, but he'll be with you even unto the end of the world. And you're gonna, if you have the greatest gift in all the world, you're going to know that he lives in your soul. No matter what your mind is trying to tell you, your heart is telling you that's the soul of you. That's not the heart of the flesh. That's desperately wicked right there. That's this the heart of the soul. That's where Jesus lives. The Spirit of Christ, the Holy Ghost, the Comforter lives on the inside of my heart. It's plain and simple as that. If you're a believer, you got him on the inside. You got his Spirit on the inside of your heart. Just plain and simple as that. So let's look at this scripture. This scripture is in the book of Acts, chapter 2, right here. And many people have preached this and preached different things, but he's fixing to tell you how to get saved. We see many baptisms in the Bible right there. And somebody says, well, you know, let's don't have denominations. I wish it could be that simple. But the reason I'm a Baptist preacher is because of this fact, because of once saved, always saved. I believe when a person truly gets saved and born again, he's a Christian no matter what happens after that. He is a Christian on the inside. Can't The devil can't change it. The devil can't stop it. The gates of hell can't prevail against it. Right there, if you're truly saved, you're saved for. Ever, and that's why I'm a Baptist, because we believe in that fact. I don't hardly know no other denominations that believe that fact. They try to add works in there. They try to say, well, if you're gone too far, you will never be able to come back to the Lord. Some of them say that. Some of them say if you sin, you get unsaved, you got to get saved again. You can only get saved once and for all right there. Jesus ain't never left me. I've made a lot of blunders. A lot of mistakes, but you know what? I got the comfort of walking with me. I got the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. I got the, the confidence of the Lord right there in my mind and in my heart that I'm saved eternally right there. And if you'll seek him right there, 
I don't care. Let me tell you something. I don't care if the whole world was to turn around at one time and tell me, Bobby, you're on your way to hell. Bobby, you're not saved. Let me tell you, that wouldn't move me one bit right there because the one that keeps me is Jesus right there. I got a personal relationship with Jesus right there. It cannot be broken. I cannot be convinced otherwise. I got eternal life. And God wants you to come to that point where you know that you have passed from death unto life because he's in you of a truth and because he put a love for precious souls in you and he put a love for his children in you right there. And he said, you're my friends. If you do whatsoever I command you, let me tell you something. What he commanded me was to get saved and born again right there. And he is my friend. And I'm trying to walk with him. And I'm talking to him. And he's talking to me. And I feel his presence right there. And I got that blessed assurance. Let me tell you, somebody says, well, uh, uh, you know, I, I got to get my assurance. I'm going to tell you something. I got my assurance right when I got saved that I was born again and saved right there when you start to think well I might be unsaved and things like that that's because you're not walking with him like you need to if you're saved and born again if you got him in your heart it cannot be broken thank God for that you know so let's look at this scripture right here He's talking about getting saved. He's talking to the Jewish people. The day of Pentecost came and P Peter and the eleven stood up and they preached the gospel to all these Jewish people from all around the world. That was Jews from every nation under heaven, the Bible says. And they stood up and preached Jesus unto them. The Jewish people believed in Moses. The Jewish people believed, I'm a son of God. I'm going to heaven. The Jewish people says, I, I keep the law. I'm going to heaven. But they stood up. Peter flat-footedly said, that's not good enough. Let me tell you what to do to be saved. So let's see. He says in Acts 2, verse 38. I want you to read that. You've been reading the Bible all these years and you don't know nothing about Acts 2, 38. Come on now. Think about that. You don't hardly know nothing the Bible, about the Bible and you've been reading it for years. Come on. That makes me angry in the Lord. You don't know nothing about your Bible. You ain't got that personal relationship with the Lord. Come on now. No wonder you can't quote nothing. No wonder you can't tell somebody about Jesus. You don't know nothing about him, Harley. All you know is you got saved. That was it. Get in the Bible sometime and learn something about your Heavenly Father and about the Word right there. So let's look at this. Acts 2.38. He says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent. They said, what must we do to be saved? What must we do? Peter said, repent. That's the first. That's the key word. Repent. That, what is repent? In this situation, it ain't a change of mind. I wish people quit saying that. It's a change of heart. It's when you turn in your soul from your sins because you believe Jesus, because you believe in the death, burial, resurrection of Christ, and you turn from your sins and turn to God, that's repentance. That's what it takes to get saved. That's what it takes to get to Christ right there is turning from your sins and give them to Jesus. Put them underneath the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ right there. That's what I did. I repented. I was sorrowful that I sinned against God because I believe God. I wanted to be saved. Jesus said, you're going to hell. I believed him. If you don't receive me as your personal Savior, if you don't repent and believe the gospel, you're going to hell. And I believed it. I turned from and turned to God right there. And he says, repent. That's the key word. And be baptized Every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins right there. Why would you do it? Because for the remission of your sins, you're brought under that name. You believe that name. You trust that name is going to save you right there. That's not baptism in water right there. That's trusting in his name, trusting in his death, burial, and resurrection, totally giving yourself unto Christ right there in your soul right there. You're brought under the preaching of the word of God. You believe Jesus 
right there. That's the name, only name unto heaven given among men, whereby you must be saved is the lovely name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right there. That's not wor- that's not water baptism. You know what I know that ain't water baptism because water baptism is an element of this world. The Bible says we're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. He's talking about the elements of this world and water is corruptible. Just just turn on the tap and you'll find out if you get a filter, you'll find out that water is corruptible. It don't have no power to save. It's plain and simple as that. Plain and simple as that. Water has no power to save. So yes, I know that baptism is not talking about water because it is a corruptible thing. He said you're not redeemed with corruptible things such as silver and gold. Silver and gold some of the purest things on earth right there. And then comes water. Think about that right there. It's an element of this world. Peter said you're not redeemed with corruptible things. That's the corruptible things. We're redeemed by the incorruptible seed, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So he's not talking about baptism in water right there. He's talking about bring them under the name of the Lord Jesus. He's talking about trusting in that name to get you to heaven right there. Trusting in the Son of God and then trust that he died for your sins. You should have been on the cross. You should have suffered and died for your sins. But Jesus took your place. And he said, all you got to do is believe what I did for you. And you shall be saved. Thank God. Whoever has a son has life. And the wrath of God don't abide on him. It's just plain and simple as that. Plain and simple as that. And then he says, when you do this, when you repent and believe the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, Bring yourself under that name, right there. Die to yourself. Then he'll give you the free gift of eternal life and seal you with his Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. Right there. He said, right when you believed, he gave you of his Holy Spirit. He sealed you with the Holy Spirit of promise unto the day of redemption. I'm, I'm going to sing the hallelujah chorus on that. I'm giving Jesus all the praise for my salvation. Ain't nothing I did as far as meriting this salvation or deserving. Nobody deserves to go to heaven. We deserve, we deserve to go to hell. Only Jesus is the one that deserves it all right there. He paid it all. He paid the sin debt. Right, just plain and simple. I don't understand that you can live in the United States of America and you don't even realize that why Jesus died on the cross. I can't understand that. We got a church on every corner. I mean, we got even on YouTube, we got videos about preaching and, and probably TikTok and, and different uh, platforms. And you telling me you don't know why Jesus died on the cross? That is awful right there. What happened to the parents right there? Think about that. There's some people that's not been raised with the gospel. There's some people that's not even really heard the gospel. It's just plain and simple as that. They ain't heard the gospel. That is a shame. I had somebody I know, and they said, my dad said something about the blood of Jesus, and they had no clue what the blood of Jesus meant. That is awful. Just plain and simple. That is awful. That we Right here in America, that we still have people like that there's a lot of people like it let me tell you something they're trying to bury christianity they're trying to shut up christianity right there people the christians better wake up they better wake up and get in the word wake out of your sleep that's what the bible says wake up to righteousness wake up to the bible wake up to what god and don't be afraid to stand up even if it costs you right here i'm gonna tell you something what is really getting in people's, uh, why people are turning the wrong way is because they got businesses and they're afraid. They're afraid to lose their business. They're afraid to lose their money. And then they, they just group up with the wrong crowd. And they just leave God behind right there. If there was some real preachers just plowing and plowing in this society right here, that would deal with people's heart, just like old John the Baptist. He plowed. He preached against the king. King Herod put him in jail because he said, it ain't lawful for you to take your brother's wife. 
his brother gave that wife to him. His brother probably had several wives, and they said, here, man, I don't want her no more. You take her. And evidently she was a horse woman because she had a horse daughter right there. He said, I don't want her. Just, just take her, you know, as you're one of your little play toys probably. And old John, the Baptist, come along and said, hey, Herod, that ain't right. That was, that was the king, Herod, right there. Then he told the sh soldiers flat-footed. He says, don't abuse nobody. They said, what must we do? Even the soldiers were fear and trembling against John right there. They, they, they knew something was wrong in their life, and they knew something was real about John. And said, what do you want us to do? He says, don't be roughing nobody up no more. You be fair and don't be falsely accusing nobody. And here comes the tax collectors, you know what I mean? They get a little power. They say, and they start ripping people off, you know, skimming at the top. And maybe they're supposed to charge $10 and they're charging 30 for it, you know what I mean? And so when the tax collectors come, he said, don't you, don't you overcharge them people like that. Even the tax collectors was fearing and trembling. They knew something real about John. And then when the old Pharisees come, the religious crowd come, they didn't ask him. What they say? Uh, John picked a fight with him. He said, "Hey, you don't think you're something special? Don't think you're going to heaven right there?" He says, "Just because you're a son of Abraham, just because you're Jewish, you keep the law of Moses. Don't you think that?" He says, "God can turn these rocks where they can have babies to Abraham right there." You see what I'm talking about? John, John preached against the religious crowd. He preached against the soldiers. He even preached against regular folks. He told them like it, he wasn't preaching against them. He was trying to help them. He was trying to expose their sins. He was letting them see that they needed a Savior, which was the Messiah, the Lamb of God. He did not know his name at the time. He knew that he was a Lamb of God, that great prophet that's supposed to come. John was the forerunner. He preached the gospel to them right there. And John baptized with water. Why did he baptize with water? First of all, God told him to baptize with water. That ain't what got them saved right there. The baptism in water was a demonstration about what Jesus was fixing to do. The kingdom of God is at hand. He said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. That means you can reach out and grab it. That means the Holy Ghost was fixing to be given. And John the Baptist come on the scene and says, Believe the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the whole world. He said, Everybody's going to see the righteousness of God. He said, John baptized with water and preached the baptism of repentance. That's two different baptisms right there. First of all, that's three different baptisms. Actually, if you want to look at it, one of them was with water. That's the lesser of all of them. Water was just a demonstration of what God was fixing to do. He said, repent. That pre John brought them under. He baptized them with his preaching. But then he said, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. He said, there's one that comes. He said, I must decrease, but he must increase. There's one that comes after me, is preferred before me right there. And he was before me right there. He said, he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Right there. God told John the Baptist to go preach in the wilderness. He said, go separate yourself and start baptizing people. Why is John baptizing? They asked him that. It says, why are you baptizing? You're not the Christ. If, you're, if you be not the Christ, why are you baptizing then? Because God told him. John the Baptist said that. The, the one that sent me to baptize is also the one that told me to uh, be a forerunner, to preach the kingdom of God as an end. He said, repent. He said, hey, you soldiers, y'all need to quit roughing people up. Y'all need to quit falsely doing this. You tax collectors, y'all need to straighten it up and quit doing this. You you religious brass hats over there, y'all need to get saved and born again. It's plain and simple. Give to the poor. You know, all kinds of things. Then he said, he said he's got an axe in his hand. Jesus is coming with an axe in his hand. He's going to chop down that tree that brings forth not any fruit. Right there. The only way to bring fruit to righteousness is to get saved. I have that fruit of righteousness. I have what it takes to get to heaven. That's God in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. He's not going to bring that uh, axe to me. Uh, but if you're not saved, you ain't bringing forth no fruits of the Lord. 
He's going to chop you down one day. The Bible says he's going to cast them into unquenchable fire. Right there, that is the pit of hell right now. The hell's in the heart of the earth. People are burning down there right now. And everybody that don't get saved, that, that has enough understanding to know right from wrong about this blessed Bible right here and what God wants them to do, if they don't repent right there, they're going to be cast as stubble in the hell and they'll burn forever and ever and ever. Just plain and simple as that. We don't want you to go to hell. That's why we preach to you. I don't want my worstest enemy to go to hell. I want you to get born again and saved. John preached to everybody. I'm preaching to everybody. Jesus said, go out in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. What in the world is he talking about right there? When he said believe and be baptized, you got to realize when Jesus said that, that 10 more days later, that's when he was fixed to give the Holy Ghost. He said that on his last day on earth. Repent, he, he that believeth and is baptized. He said that on the last day on earth right there. Ten days later, he gave them the Holy Ghost. He baptized them with the Holy Ghost. And that's what it took to get saved. I remember when I was baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm going to tell you when I got it. Right when I got saved, he baptized my soul right there. When I repented and believed the gospel, I was brought on the subject in that name, like the book of Acts talks about in chapter 2 right here. I was brought into that preaching that name. I believed it. I received it. And I died to my sorry self right there. And then he baptized me with his Holy Ghost. It's plain and simple. You don't get the Holy Ghost later. I know in the book of Acts it shows that you get it later, but you got to understand something about the book of Acts. The book is book of Acts is right, right, right. I, I just want you to know that right off the bat. If you're thinking there's any error in there, it's right. Okay? The misunderstanding is you got to realize that was a transition time where Christians got saved without being baptized with the Holy Ghost before Jesus died on that cross and before Jesus gave the Holy Ghost right there. That's why we see some Christians did not have the Holy Ghost as of yet. He only could move on them. He couldn't live in them. And, and they got the baptism of the Holy Ghost later when the apostles prayed over them and preached to them the full gospel right there. They was baptized with the Holy Ghost and they began to speak in different nationalities right there. And as the Spirit gave them other, the Bible says, and that was the evidence of having the Holy Ghost that showed the world, hey, they got the Holy Ghost as well as we. And then Peter said in chapter 10, he said, here's water. What prevents them seeing they have received the Holy Ghost as well as we right there. So why do we get baptized now? John baptized to show what was coming. And we baptize to show what already came in our heart, what God did in our heart. I hope you understand that right there. It's just plain and simple as that. That was the Holy Spirit bringing all that out of me right there. He wants to bless you. But watch out if you're wrestling and you think, well, I don't know if I'm saved or not. And and you, you might say, well, the devil's trying to tell me I'm not saved. Be careful. It might be the Lord trying to tell you. But there's one good thing about it. The devil will attack your mind right there. But God will speak to your heart. You need to get saved. You need to get saved right there. But when you're a Christian, God's not going, you need to get saved. You need to get saved. When you're saved, God's not dealing with you about getting saved. God ain't never dealt with me about getting saved after I got saved. Right there. He, what he spoke to me about after I got saved is get right, get in that Bible, study, pray, win souls, live for me right there, walk in my commandments. That's what God's been dealing with me about, you know, over 30 years now. Ever since I was 20, I'm 50 now. And when I was 20 years old, February 93, God saved my soul. When I was driving down the road at 20 years old, I was just a young man right there, void of understanding. And God spoke to my heart, and he saved me that day. I had to give it up. The Lord, he can only deal with you. He, can, he draws you. He speaks to you. But he won't force himself to uh, save you right there. It's just plain and simple. you got to be willing in your heart. you got to give yourself to Christ right there. You turn from your old life and turn to God with all your heart. That's all it takes. I, I wasn't in error not one time. Anything I said today, I wasn't in error 
Not one time. It's just plain and simple. I preach the truth. That's why the Holy Ghost is on me. That's why God uses me right there. It's just plain and simple as that. That's why God's using me right there. Do you feel his presence? Is he using you and speaking through you right there? I love him today. I love his precious word. And I want you to get saved and born again. And, and if you're a Christian, I want you to get closer to the Lord. Draw nan to God and he would draw nan to you. Flee from the devil and the devil will flee from you. It's just plain and simple. Learn how to follow Jesus. Learn how to follow Jesus right there. This old world is going to hell in a handbasket. It is. It's getting so bad out there. You hear it. I just was so grieved when I was listening to the news today. I was like, man, just shaking my head and all. What's going on in this world? The devil's getting stronger. God's people's getting weaker right here. Let's think about it. We got to stay right there. Stay faithful to the Lord and, and just stay in his word, stay in prayer, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might right there. Just look unto him for help. God will protect you in the midst of the storm. He will protect you in all the foolishness that's going on in the world right there. Just look to the Lord. Some people have thought about killing themselves. I've said this before. There's no reason to kill yourself. You need to turn to God right there. Most most of the time when you're ready to kill yourself, you're not saved. You don't understand nothing about eternity and and going to hell and stuff like that right there. But sometimes some Christians, I believe, kill themselves. And I believe it's because they're not right with God. They've not trusted in the Lord. You can't blame your problems on everybody else. You, everybody else ain't your problem. You're your problem. You've not sought God. He said, if you seek him, you're going to have peace. You can, If you seek him, God will help you through every storm that comes along. He didn't say you're not going to have storms. He didn't say you're not going to have sickness, but he'll help you through every bit of it. That's part of this life right here. But he'll take care of you all the way to the grave. Right there, look to the Lord when you get lonely and just look to the Lord and ask him for strength. God will move some mountains in your life. Just wait patiently for the Lord and he'll sustain you right there. He'll work things out. If you just keep going to him in prayer right there, this old life is going to perish and pass away one day. After a while, we're going to go on to be with the Lord up in the heaven. Thank God heaven's going to be wonderful and beautiful just plain and simple as that. I love heaven. I can't wait to go to heaven right there to get away from this so sorry world. There are some things I do love about this world, and that's my family. That's serving God. That's this Bible. Good eating, good living. And I like to look at nature that God made right here. But there's a lot of things I don't like about this old world. And God's going to deliver us one day after a while. He'll take us on out of here in eternity, and we'll be able to go on to be with the Lord, and so shall we ever be with Jesus. Right when I leave this body, I'm going to be always with Jesus. It's plain and simple as that right there. I want you to get saved and born again. Make sure you are saved. It's plain and simple. It's so simple that you can make sure you're saved is, is you feel Him in your heart. you got confidence in your heart right there. And you got peace with the Lord Jesus Christ on the inside of your heart. You know, I'm not going to go any further than that and go in detail unless God wants me to, and I don't believe he wants to go any further than that. But I appreciate you tuning my way today. I want you to like and subscribe and, and listen to us on a regular basis and get closer to God right there. Just get closer to the Lord. And I want to say this. If you don't feel like your church is real, and, and you don't feel the Lord in it, and you feel like it's fake, I, I would get out of it. Unless God wanted you to stay there to be a light to them, I would get out right there. You ain't got to do that. So I got to go to church somewhere. Don't go to a false church right there. It's just plain and simple as that. Get in there and study your Bible and pray and seek God's face right there because you don't, you don't want to be in the wrong house unless God leads you there. Sometimes he does lead you as a mission, Sometimes, like in the Bible days, 
Jesus come forth, and when he started his public ministry, he went all over preaching the gospel to different synagogues, and so did Paul, and so did all them other believers. And we see Peter, you know, he's supposed to be the head of the church in Jerusalem right there, but you find Peter everywhere. You know, he's going everywhere to preach the gospel to a lost and dying world. We find Philip way up there. I, I can't even think of the name right now where he was, where he lived with his four virgin daughters right there that prophesy, the Bible says. You know what I mean? So they went out preaching everywhere, the Lord working with them, you know. But if you if you go to a church and that's your home church and it ain't real, I think I would get out. It's just plain as simple as that. If you don't feel like it's coming from the Lord, you don't have that peace right there, I would get out. Don't get further into foolishness. You'll be just like them and you'll be so backslidden. I, you just got to get real about it. You know what I mean? Just get real. God will lead you. He'll lead you out. He'll show you what to do. It ain't that hard right there to follow the Lord as far as Him instructing you. You don't need the trees to shake and you don't need to see a sign from heaven. Big old cloud comes by and said, Bobby, I want you to go here. Let me tell you something. He speaks to His children. When He wants them to do something, God will speak to you. He'll let you know just like he spoke to me and told me what to do and told me where to go and told me how to do it right there and gave me the tools to do it with. 